I now earnestly entrust the multitudes of gods and people to you. If in the future among gods and people there are good men or good women who plant a few good roots in the Buddha Dharma, I mean the teaching of the truth, of the enlightened teaching, doesn't necessarily always mean in Buddhism, okay? But because this, at that time it was Buddha, so he said Buddha Dharma, yeah? If it's Christ, then he would say, Christianity, mm -hmm. be they as little as a strand of hair, a mold of dirt, a grain of sand, or a drop of water. Then you should use your powers in the way to protect them so that they gradually cultivate the unsurpassed way and do not get lost or retreat from that. Moreover, a store in the future, God or human, according to the responses of their karmic retributions, may be due to fall into the evil destinies. They may be on the brink of falling or may be already at the very gates of those paths. But if they can recite the name of one Buddha or Bodhisattva, or a single sentence or verse of a great Vaiko Sutra, Mahayana Sutra. Then you should use your spiritual powers to rescue them with experient means. Display a boundless body in the places where they are. Smash the hells and lead them to be born in the heavens and to experience supremely wonderful bliss. These lucky people, if they found us or Bodhisattva, huh? meaning before people fall into the evil habit or evil temptation again, just just place yourself in between it, you know, with a big body so they cannot pass or do something. But only if these people recite the name of a Buddha or a Bodhisattva, meaning enlightened master or enlightened saint, or recite some uh, great vehicle sutra, like, like this one, for example, and then the Bodhisattva erst or should intervene then, has an excuse to intervene. So the Buddha implore the erst or Bodhisattva that anyone can do that, then you do even just a little bit of good. If they can even recite one sentence from this sutra or any, then please help them, yes smash the hells even, and lead them to be born in heavens and to experience supremely wonderful bliss. At that time the world honored one spoke in verse, saying, I am entrusting to your care the multitudes of God and people, both now and in the future. Use great spiritual powers and experience to save them. Do not allow them to fall into the evil destinies. Wow. Once we do something bad, something evil, then that will attract us to another evil path, and we continue to do even more and more all the time, because like attracts like. The Buddha knows that. Therefore, he finds all these excuses to help beings. Is go because it's so difficult not to fall. Huh? It's so difficult to break away from evils once you enter in that area. Just like many people who were not drug addict, but they try one time, and then of course, how can they try only one time? Somehow encounter some drug people, drug sellers, and then you already make acquaintance with these people. Next time they'll come again. And then they just try, it's free, come on. And then again and again, and then they become addicted. Once you try, you can't get out. Well, same. The first cigarette is harmless. Okay, can try. The second may be harmless. The third, maybe you still didn't want it, but it looked cool on TV. In the 50s, 60s, many of the movie stars always not always, but some of them with cigarettes and look cool, you know? So they imitated. 
So the third one you in don't like so much, but she look cool and everybody. You already in the company of smokers. And then slowly, slowly, they make you take the fourth and the fifth and the sixth, and then you're done. Then for the rest of your life, you can never get out of that habit. I'm trying very hard to speak a little slowly, because you know me. Normally, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> so that everybody <laughs> can translate. Oh. At that time, a store Bodhisattva Mahasattva knelt on one knee, placed his palms together, and said to the Buddha, "Were honored one, I beg the Buddha not to be concerned in the future." If good men and good women have a single thought of respect, even one single thought of respect toward the Buddha teaching, I shall use hundreds of thousands of expedients to take them across and free them. Take them across, you know already, huh? Across the other side to to freedom. Because the Buddha likened this word or other lower word. As the sea of suffering, so taking a cross, you know already, or ferry across, meaning liberate them. They will quickly be liberated from birth and death. How much more will that be the case for those who, having heard about all these good matters, are inspired to cultivate? They will naturally become irreversible from the unsurpassed way of the Dhamma. After he finished speaking thus, a bodhisattva named Empty Space Treasury. Hmm? How can you be a treasury when it's all empty space? <laughs> what are you guarding? Hmm? Normally, a treasury is somebody who keeps the money for a company, right? Or an organization, right? He's a empty space treasury. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> But it is a treasure. Hmm? From the empty space, everything sprung out. Huh? It is a name, I guess, from Sanskrit that translated like that. Who was in the assembly spoke to the Buddha, "World honored one, I personally have come to the Thayas Trimsa heaven, and have heard the thirst come one praise earth or Bodhisattva's awesome spiritual strength, saying that it is inconceivable, if in the future good men, good women, gods, or uh, and dragons." Hear this sutra, and the name of e r s t h o r Bodhisattva, and if they behold and bow to his image, how many kinds of blessings and benefit will they obtain? Again, I beg your pardon. Oh, good. Don't worry, I have something inside. <laughs> I prove it to you. <laughs> Don't try to criticize me. <laughs> And if I don't, well, it's usual, no? Everybody has similar. <laughs> it's only skin. Why worry? Today, you know what I was thinking. Today, I really wanted to go to India because in India, even women can also become uh, Naga Swami, no? Huh? They call it right. In Spanish, they would say nada, Swami. <laughs> I mean, it's nothing, nothing, Swami. <laughs> Very nothing, nada. <laughs> He asked, you know, this Bodhisattva asked if somebody heard this, hear this sutra, and then, and the name of uh, a star Bodhisattva, and if they behold and bow to his image, how many kinds of blessings and benefits will they obtain? Please, world honor one. Say a few words about this. For the sake of beings of the present and future. Too fast for you. You need translation. <laughs> the Buddha told empty space treasury bodhisattva, "Listen attentively. Listen attentively. I shall enumerate them and describe them to you. Good men or women in the future may see images of earth or bodhisattva." And hear this sutra, or read or recite it. They may use incense, flowers, food and drink, clothing and gems, 
precious stones, to give gifts and make offerings, they may praise, behold, and bow to him, to the image, to the image. Yeah. Such beings will benefit in 28 ways, 28 ways. First, they will be protected by gods and dragons. Second, their good roots will increase daily. Third, they will amass supreme causes pertaining to sagehood. I mean, they will get nearer and nearer to Buddhahood yeah. somehow. Fourth, they will not retreat from body, from enlightenment, and they are going, going onward now, or forward now. Fifth, their clothing and food will be abundant. Sixth, they will never be infected by epidemics. Wow, that we could do some. Seventh, they will never be in disasters of fire and water. Eighth, they will never be threatened by thieves. Ninth, they will be respected by all who see them. Tenth, they will be added by ghosts and spirits. That also means angels, but here they translate it as spirits. In a Western term, we will say angels and others. Yeah, sometimes it's funny, you know, like in the, in the Christianity, they say, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Why ghosts? <laughs> ghosts are supposed to be not so positive, right? The ghosts are from dead people. They shouldn't use that for the Holy Trinity meetings. How can ghosts are holy? <laughs> if it's holy, then it's not ghost. Yeah, so we should say, Holy Spirit or Holy... whatever. Huh? Holy Essence or Holy Spirit, at least. Yeah? But even then, these two words are not very positive, right? Not like a high, high, high sound, you know, spiritual rank, yeah? Goals and spirits, mostly we also use in the medium, right? Mm. So they should say, like, maybe the Father, the Son, and the saintly assemblies or something, yeah? Or heavenly, diverse beings, yeah? Or holy beings, yeah? Mm, holy Ghost. <laughs> Here. So the Buddha also used the same ghosts and spirits, meaning invisible beings who are benevolent. But still, I don't like the term. Mm. Probably from Sanskrit, translate to Chinese, and then Chinese translate to English, then it's all different. Yes, I'm telling you some example. For example, Newton, the great scientist, right? In Chinese. It's a new ton. It is similar. That means stupid cow. <laughs> it sounds like, you know, yeah. it's not written like that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, massage, yeah? yeah? Massage for health. And they translate into masachi, <laughs> meaning horse kill the chicken. <laughs> it sounds like that. So if uh, somebody go and see some building beautiful, say, what is in there? Say, Masachi, no? <laughs> and the police will be very scared and immediately, you know, surrounded because the horse is killing the chicken. <laughs> what for? Why? Why they do that? Have a look. Yeah. Hmm. So maybe like that. And if it's translated into English, then a horse kill chicken. <laughs> or oh, stupid cows. My God, one of the most intelligent scientists to become stupid cow. <laughs> Translation is sometimes funny. And one time, one of the Kwan Yin messenger went to Texas, yeah, to give initiation. And uh, mm, the Chinese one, you know, went into Texas and in the uh, Vietnamese family, and the Chinese say to say to, to the translator, you know, Chinese-Vietnamese translator, saying the owner of the house, he looked like a cowboy, yeah, because he probably wearing some cowboy boot or something. And then the translator said to the owner of the house, he said, you look like a cow. <laughs> 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 That's how 
how war started, you know? <laughs> and I told you the jokes already about the French speaking, huh? So these are the, the things you should never say in French, okay? The guy... <laughs> The American go to a French coffee and order a, a coffee, cafe latte, huh? mm. yeah, have a drink. And the, the one next to him said, no, 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 for me, for me. I mean, there's an ant, an ant is crawl, crawling, don't, don't drink, no, no, for me, for me. He said, for me? No, it's for me. <laughs> Not for you, for me. <laughs> and, then, and then the friends were so scared, run away. <laughs> Tomorrow the American come back again, and then the, 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 he already understood. After the French run away, many people who know English explain to him, no, no, it was, he's so kind, he told you there's an ant, don't drink. Oh, he said, so sorry. So tomorrow he came back to the same coffee shop, want to find the, the French guy to apologize. And then he came in, and he saw the French guy. And he came in and said, oh, come here, come here. But in French, it's just similar to come here. I mean, just like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to punch you again. And the French will run, run for his life again. And the Americans, what have I said? <laughs> Okay, enough. <laughs> okay. Eleventh. Women who want to can be reborn as men. Why? Do you? You want to become a man? No, huh? Why not? <laughs> Just today I was thinking if I'm a man, it would be better. You know? Then I don't have to wear so many stuff. <laughs> I saw many guru. He just wrap a, a piece of cloth around him and sit everywhere, and all the disciples also bow at his feet. Yeah, you know, right? Many photos from the east to the west. Men is easy, right? And we can never wear enough clothes, but they don't need to. <laughs> I was wondering, because at home I like to wear this T-shirt, you know? It's uh, long and... Uh, tight, so at night, it's like a sleeping. Also, it's warm your body when you wear it tighter, you know, some tighter, like a long john and a T-shirt. But but also daytime, then when I'm lazy, I don't, I don't take it off. You know, I just wear that at home. But normally, I can never find the one with, with the neck up to here. I don't like the turtle neck, of course, but the neck up to here is can never find a woman. It's always so cut so deep. I don't know why. <laughs> we have a lot, and they want to show it. A man has nothing, and the man write it up to here. <laughs> and even cravat, <laughs> you know, tie and everything, hiding. Well, what is it they're hiding inside? They have nothing at all. <laughs> Nobody even wants to look. What the heck? They have nothing. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> and a woman, huh? even cold winter, have to wear so deep neck. <laughs> and then the rope so short. I don't know why. And they must shave so in order to show off. <sighs> so I always have to, mostly, if I can, I tell my assistant or whoever go by me, go to the men. <laughs> I said, buy me the one without the deep neck. I want it warm here. I cannot find. And I said, why, why you have one like you? You have one, the one like you wear. He said, that's in men's store, master. <laughs> <laughs> you see, all, all the men, the, the, the T-shirt, you saw that? You saw? All the way up to here. And we women, uh, cold like crazy, must wear like this. <laughs> deep for the deep for the better. <laughs> yeah, I wonder, huh? Hmm. Crazy word. <laughs> Twelve. Women who want to can be 
daughters of national leaders and officials. Thirteenth, they will have upright and proper appearances. Fourteenth, they will often be born in the heavens. Fifteenth, they may be emperors or leaders of nations. Sixteen, you know, these people who respect the Buddha Sutra, etc. Yeah. They will have the wisdom to know past lives. Seventeenth, they will attain whatever they seek. Eighteenth, their families will be happy. Nineteenth, they will never undergo any disaster. <laughs> <laughs> thinking of man and woman. <laughs> such a such a <laughs> such a ridiculous. <laughs> they have nothing at all, and all have to go off. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> and we should hide something, you know. Otherwise, they would say we are we have temptation for them. Uh, and all the clothes are cut all the way up to the navel, even. <laughs> oh my God, it is funny, right? <laughs>